Welcome to our live stream. Amen. Our day number one. Day number one of the five days of prayer and fasting. Glory be to God forevermore. Amen. So I'm just going to go straight into the scriptures, right? Hebrews chapter 4. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 16. Glory be to God forevermore. So I'm going to open it. So I'm going to start with. Uh, King James Version. King James Version reads, uh, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And find grace to help in time of need. Glory be to God. Grace is a helper. Grace is divine influence over the heart of men. It is divine influence over the heart of men. Amen. So let me just um, show you the, the definition. Glory. Hallelujah. The, the definition of the definition of throne. Amen. So within these five days, you realize that um, I will be going deeper in definition, in deeper in the word of God and the definitions also that God has granted us. Amen. So that one thing that you need to realize is when we are talking about a throne, amen, a throne in uh, Hebrew, in Greek language, it is thronos. It is Thronos, T-H-R-O-N-O-S, amen. And I'm broadcasting from my prayer room where I will be locked up for the next five days. Glory be to God, amen. So you will be with me for the next five days, five days. And the beauty of it is, the beauty of these prayers of the first the first fasting is the establishment of the word of the year. It is when the word is spoken, brethren, it can only sink by prayer, sinking it into prayer. You remember, I can give an example. When Jesus was baptized by River Jordan, and, Jesus, and the Lord, the Father himself, confirmed that this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. I was thinking that Jesus was just going to go straight home and start telling brethren that God has confirmed my ministry. God has confirmed my, my mission here on the earth. But one thing that we need to, re uh, one thing that really, um, amazed me was Jesus was <laughs> was rushed into the wilderness to pray and fast 40 days and 40 nights. 40 days and 40 nights into the wilderness after God had confirmed what was he doing what was we doing in those 40 days and 40 nights? We can see by the we can see by the results that came forth. And one thing that you need to realize is there was a provocation in the kingdom of darkness, right on the last day that the devil appeared and say, if you are. The first approach was, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Hang on, 40 days and 40 nights before, God just confirmed, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Then 40 days and 40 nights after, the devil appeared and said, if you are the son of God. <laughs> but then God was coming from a prayer. 
quality time with God. Quality time with God. If he had not, if he hadn't fasted, after God has spoken, yes, God has spoken concerning our 2022. That is going to be our year of the of the glory of the Spirit. That is the glory of the Holy Spirit. Grace unlimited. And it's going to be our year of quality fellowship with the Holy Ghost. In those quality fellowship of the Holy Ghost, God will be giving instructions. God will be speaking. And when God is speaking, I can tell you more that God speaks more when you're in prayer. Yes, he can speak anytime, he can speak anywhere, but he speaks more in prayer. He speaks more when you are praying. So there is much more quality time in prayer. And also when you are reading his word, because he said, my sheep heareth my word. And the voice of a stranger, they despise it. So we hear him through his word. So do not take these days of prayer and fasting for granted. The beautiful part of it, it is called prayer and fasting. It's not fasting and praying. So it starts with prayer for it to become a fasting. Because outside prayer, brethren, it will be, <laughs> it will be hunger strike. Outside prayer, outside the word of God. So here it's a fasting. It's a fasting. You are fasting on physical food. But you are feasting. A fasting is a feasting on the word. You are substituting the natural food to spiritual food. You are subduing the the flesh. You are subduing, you are suffocating the flesh. Because normally the flesh is too loud. But you are subduing it. It's a subduing of the flesh. Hallelujah. And allow the spirit to have a loud voice and a loud control. Hallelujah. We all know that the flesh loves to be loud. But the spirit man is the real man. The flesh is just the body. It is just a vessel. The flesh is that what is just a what a vessel. The flesh is a vessel. But when the spirit is fed, brother, that's the real man. Because the man that God born again when he received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior is the spirit. It is the spirit that is the real you that God born again. So the real you that got born again is to be fed with spiritual food. Jesus says, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Brother, there is a word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That is a spiritual food. To feed your spirit. To feed your spirit. Back to Luke chapter 4. When Jesus left the wilderness, the Bible tells us that he was, okay, after his baptism, amen, he was led by the spirit into the wilderness. He was led by the spirit into the wilderness. Hallelujah. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So after 40 days and 40 nights, right? He then, (laughs) he then, the devil then appeared. But the devil appeared 
with scriptures. So it means that when you are praying and fasting, you must be established in scriptures because the devil was saying, it is written, it is written, it is written. One thing that the devil will challenge you is what God has said concerning you. This 2022 is what God has spoken concerning you. Then if God is saying, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that's what the devil questioned. Amen. He said, if you are the son of God, when God speaks, brethren, don't fold your arms. Get into the action of prayer and fasting. Jesus did it until he defeated, until he defeated the devil. Hallelujah. And he was also countering the devil's scriptures. Counter one thing that you need to realize this year, 2022, you have to be rich in scriptures, rich in the word of God. The Bible says, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You should be in a position to divide the word. Hallelujah. The word has to be divided. You need to, you need to know the scripture for yourself. One thing, remember, I always say this to you. I don't read the Bible to preach, but I read the Bible to enhance my spiritual life. So out of the overflow of what I've downloaded, this is what I give. Hallelujah. Out of the overflow, don't read the Bible to preach, or don't read the Bible to preach to somebody. The Bible must change you. It has to transform you. In prayer and fasting, it is so vital that each position, prayer does not hold God <laughs> by the neck or by the collar. We are not holding God by the collar. And your prayers should not be, should not be selfish prayers. Most prayers, glorious prayers that, are, that God answers are when you are interceding for somebody else. When you are inside interceding for his work, for the expansion of his kingdom, for the establishment of nations, and letting Christ rule in nations, in regions, in cities, the winning of souls, transformation of lives. Prayer shouldn't be personal. It has to do with your spiritual growth. It's one thing to change things by prayer, but it is another higher and greater dimension when prayer is changing you. Prayer must change you. It must change your character, your attitude, hallelujah, your perceptions, the way you perceive things. Hallelujah. So on this, Luke chapter 4, starting from verse number 16. Then the Bible says, the Bible reads clearly that when he left the wilderness, brother, he left from verse number 14, right? He left the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. After 14 days, of, after 40 days and 40 nights, that which led him into the wilderness entered him hmm, and started controlling him. So from, from verse number 16, then you hear that there was a noise in the region concerning him. He was supernaturally advertised by angels. There was a noise around about in the region. Just his, just his entrance. And then he entered into the synagogue. Beautiful part. He entered into the synagogue. When he entered the synagogue, brethren, a book was handed over to him. 
said, it is no one's. A book was handed over to him. And he looked and found the scripture where it was written concerning him. He said, this is my beloved son. He said, he, and he opened the scripture. When he opened the scripture, he said, oh, hallelujah. He said, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. The Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel. And there's a list of things that he, he, what? he read through the scripture. And the Bible said he closed the book and he gave it to the one who was presiding that service in the synagogue. And he said, this scripture is fulfilled in thy hearing. I want you to take cognizance of the sequence of things. God spoke at, by River Jordan, went into fasting and prayer. Immediately after fasting, the devil appeared to challenge that which God spoke. He defeated the devil. The Bible said, in the devil departed for a season. He defeated the devil. Then a fame after that. So after fasting, you realize that things will appear. There is a spiritual reaction that will happen. Do not be dismayed. Or maybe a devil appears. Do not be dismayed. Goliath appears to be defeated by David. There is no David without Goliath. There is no David without Goliath. There is no Moses without Pharaoh. On every stage of attainment, every level, there are different demons assigned to every level that you attain. But they appear to be defeated so that you gain another level, so that you will, so that you attain to another level of spiritual operation. You attain to another dimension of the operations of the spirit. Glory be to God. Then afterwards, brethren, he closed the book. Then afterwards, right after defeating the devil, then a fame of him went out through all the regions. Hallelujah. Through all the regions. So there are storms of life that are going to appear. They appear for you to, to defeat them. To defeat them. Hallelujah. Do not be saying, I was just coming from fasting and this happened. It has to, the devil has to appear to be defeated. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There is no qualification without a test. You have to go through an exam for you to attain a qualification. It can be a degree, it can be a master's degree. It can be anything. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. So, when we talk about our, back to our theme scripture, Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 16, coming boldly, that should be verse number, let me just go straight to it, should be verse number, hallelujah, that should be verse number 16. That's right. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 16. It reads, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. And I told you the word boldly. that It is, it is because you are not approaching God with inferiority complex to say I'm a sinner. No, you are approaching God with 
boldness because Christ paid the price. Christ paid the price. So you are approaching God in righteousness, right, right standing with God. That Christ paid the price. Hallelujah. That the price was paid. Amen. So there is no more. There is no more. <laughs> there is no more condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Because the devil is called an accuser of brethren. No more. No more condemnation. No more looking down upon yourself because the price was paid on the cross. Hallelujah. So, it, is, it reads, let us come, therefore, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of Christ, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Finding grace to help in time of of need. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. The word throne there means thronos in Greek. Amen. And it reads T H R O N O S. Thronos. And it means a seat. Hallelujah. It means a chair of state having a stool. It means a chair or a stool of authority. These are key. These are being given to kings. Figuratively, a king or a ruler. That is the throne. Glory be to God. And these throne is assigned to kings. And it means kingly power or royalty. Kingly power or royalty. Brethren, <laughs> Jesus said, occupy till I come. And he said, he said, he said, of his son, he said, sit down until I make thy what? Thy enemy, thy footstool. Throne is a chair of authority. Is a seat, is a stool of rulership. Total control, total dominion. Total dominion. You are not being controlled by the kingdom of darkness. You have got you have got control over the kingdom of darkness. You've got control over darkness, control over sickness and the works of darkness. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So it is metaphorically, Thronos is metaphorically to God, the governor of the whole world. It is metaphorically to God, who is the governor of the whole world. It is the Messiah, Christ, the partner and assistant in the divine administration. Partner and assistant in divine administration. Hallelujah. And it is the divine power belonging to Christ that has been bestowed in your hearts to rule when God made men in his own image. He said, have dominion, subdue, have dominion, have the power, have the authority. Glory be to God forevermore. So in these five days of the throne of grace, you see, I'll take you to Hebrews chapter 5, to, sorry, to Romans chapter 5, verse 17. 
it reads, much more they with which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. The word reign is to king, is to have total control. He said, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, we are reigning through God's righteousness over the kingdoms of darkness. We are reigning over the works of darkness through grace. We are reigning over darkness through grace. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life through Christ Jesus. You are reigning in life through Christ. You are reigning in life. You are reigning over darkness, over sickness, over the works of darkness, over poverty. Through Christ. And he said, Occupy till I come. So these are five days of total dominance, total dominance over darkness, total dominance over the kingdoms of devil, over the devil's kingdom. Hallelujah. Over the kingdoms of darkness. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Christ Jesus. Amen. So, okay, let's go back to he said, the throne of grace. So, I'm going to give you two definitions tonight concerning the throne and the grace. So, number two, grace. Hallelujah. What is grace? In Greek, it means charis. C H A R I S. Charis. What is charis? Glory be to God. It is, it is, you need the, you know, the word called charisma. The word called charisma comes from the word charis. Something good about a man of grace, something attractive, something beautiful about a man of grace. When grace is working in your life, <laughs> there's something beautiful about you that causes even men to favor you. Even if you don't deserve things, these are it's a divine influence. It's God's divine influence over the heart of men. It is God's divine influence, divine spirit that controls the spirit of the of the vessel that is you so something about something about the beauty of Christ that is imparted on men hallelujah right amen and it means you see charis means um the joy the pleasure, the delight, the sweetness, the charm. It's got to do with charm. Hallelujah. And loveliness and grace of speech. It is got to do with something, men of grace. People flock around them. People just want to listen to them. People just want to help them. You hear somebody saying, it has got to do with favor, metaphorically favor. When, <laughs> when grace is working in your life, men will just favor you. If you come to a place when 
you are just in a plane and you didn't even pay, you paid an economy class and somebody picks you and put you in a, in a probably in a business class. That is what we call favor. That is what we call grace. People who don't have a re- who don't walk in the revelation, it's one thing to receive something, but it's another thing to walk in what you've received. People who walk in grace, hallelujah. People who walk in grace, brethren, people who walk in grace, <laughs> people who walk in grace, everything falls into place without struggling. Without struggling, everything falls into place. People who walk in grace, everyone just wants to help them. But here we are talking, we are, this scripture is talking about the grace of God. Coming back to the throne of grace, God's throne of grace. Where there is an assistance of angels. There is an assistance of divine being. You know, I always say, If you don't deserve it, you can grace it. Amen? If you don't qualify for it, you can grace it. Grace is what is that which qualifies you. You know, like Christ qualified us (laughs) into God's favor. Christ qualified us. Actually, Christ translated us from the wrath of God into God's favor. Because Adam caused the wrath of God to fall upon mankind. Amen. Because the Bible tells us clearly that in the book of Corinthians, right? To be first Corinthians, that the first man Adam was made a living soul. The second and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The second and the last Adam, who is Jesus Christ, came to quicken our spirit, came to make us alive. We were without God. Christ qualified us. Christ qualified us. I'll come back to that, right? Listen here. So grace has to do, carries, this word carries has to do with the merciful kindness by which God exerting his holy influence upon souls. Hallelujah. It is it has to do with God's mercifulness, God's kindness. Amen. And exerting and God exerting his holy influence. It is this in, this invisible influence mm-hmm. that is work, that is at work in a life that causes things to fall into place, that causes things to line up for your favor. Hallelujah. David said. Lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. And I've got a goodly heritage. In grace, brethren, you inherit goodness. And he said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Brethren, when, <laughs> when mercy and righteousness kiss each other, brethren, explosion takes place. When mercy and righteousness kiss each other. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It is the favor of God, the grace of God. So within these next five days, this is day number one. These next five days, you'll be swimming in God's favor. <laughs> and you'll be having more revelation of the love of God concerning the scriptures. I'm just laying a foundation today. I'll go deeper tomorrow. 
I will go deeper tomorrow. Amen. Glory be to God. So you need, because you know what? The true wisdom and knowledge. Hallelujah. Amen. See, wisdom and knowledge shall be this stability of thy times. It is what you know that is that will put you on top. And the devil takes advantage of your ignorance. God said, My people perish because of lack of knowledge. You have to have the knowledge. That is the revelation. The revelation, and to start walking in that revelation. Hallelujah. So the word carries, brethren, <laughs> it is a divine influence. It is God's divine influence. God's divine control over your state, over your estate, over your dreams. God is in charge. You are inviting God in your case. You are inviting God in your walk, in your, in right at the beginning of the year. You know, it matters how you start. You see, victory when you want to win a race, right? If you want to win a race, brethren, you know, or we all know about the fastest, the fastest men who. Who is the fastest man now in the world, right? Uh, you send both. You understand? Or right, those who love athletics. It is how you start and how you finish that you will make you have a crown. Because it has to do with the touching line. It's called the starting line. There is the starting line and the touch line, which is heavy end of the race. There are two things that matter. Actually, three things. How you start your year matters. And how you are consistent with how you started. It is your consistent. How you start, because many start and quit and fall along the way. So, when you start you maintain your momentum. It is called steadfastness. It is called consistency. And it, 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 it will, this is the consistency then that will propel you to the touch line. That is a finishing line. It is called also the finishing line. So it is how you start, how you maintain the way you started, and how you touch the line. They matter a lot. God wants to do something special in your life. This year, this is a special year, different from all other years. And I told you that you'll be breaking records. Grace unlimited. You will be breaking records. This is, this is a, a year that you break records. And it will allow you to take you out of your comfort zone, which is called the faith zone. That which is outside your comfort zone is the faith zone. It is the faith zone where you are faithful, where you are walking not according to your senses, but according to the word of God, according to what God has said concerning you. Hallelujah. What the God said concerning you. Welcome to day number one of the throne of grace. So I'm going to go deeper with this subject of grace tomorrow. Hallelujah. And within these next five days, brother, that will be available. 
same time, same place. Hallelujah. So fasting, brethren, is not hunger strength. Fasting positions you. Fasting is not holding God by the corner. Let God give me, give me. No. All things has been given unto us. So through his divine influence, he has given all things. He has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Everything has been granted unto us in Christ. So why fasting? Fasting positions you. Fasting is like it increases your reception because you are the receiver. It increases your network. It positions you to receive from God without hindrances. Fasting, <laughs> fasting clarifies your focus. Your focus is defined in fasting. So during these days of prayer and fasting, avoid distractions. I always tell people, it is a time to take off days and be with God. If you're at work, you take off days, secluded time with God, like what I am now, where I'm just secluded myself from the business of the world. And I'm locked up in this prayer room, in a lodge somewhere far away, to be with God, to have a special time with God. Have a special time with God. Spend time with God. Don't spend time with men. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. You see, one thing that when you <laughs> when you spend time with God, you see, if you go to Hebrews to Acts chapter 2, right? It tells us then that the disciples were not learned. Amen. But they took knowledge that they have been with Jesus. Seeing the boldness. Imagine seeing the boldness. You see, when you spend time with God, you are bold. No wonder why the scriptures say the righteous are as bold as a lion. Fear disappears. Because fear is the greatest enemy of faith. Fear is the greatest enemy of success. Hence Hebrews chapter 4, the, the theme scripture of our five days. Coming boldly. You are not coming with fear. You are coming with confidence. The word boldness means confidence. Because faith is the confidence, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God wants you to operate in a higher dimension of faith this 2022. Higher dimension of faith. Start in a higher dimension of faith. So this five, this five days of praying fasting is going to set the tone of your walk in 2022. You set the tone. You see, have you ever seen a rocket, when a rocket is being launched, who has ever seen a rocket being launched? But then there will be an explosion and there will be fire underneath. You just think a, a bomb has just been set off. A rocket, because it's not going, it is to go against the, the law of gravity in speeds and pass through and get into the space and it is to reach its target. It is to reach the moon. It is to do with the target, right? So a rocket is set with fire. When a rocket is taking off, it takes off and it is an explosion like a boom and there's fire. Start your year with an explosion of fire. Start your year with an explosion of fire. Start your year on fire. 
for the Lord. You see, I was speaking to some brethren that, you know, there's something, as I was leading today's afternoon prayers at the church auditorium, some brethren, you know, there's this appetite of the word of God that has been stayed within my spirit. It's like this special appetite of the word of God. Like I'm craving for the word of God that never been before. You know, brethren, if you see yourself, if you see your appetite for the word diminishing, know ye that you're in danger. The devil is about to strike. There are two things that normally happen when the devil is about to strike. Your prayer life diminishes and your appetite of the word diminishes. It's an indication that you want, it's time to start fasting. You don't need to be told. When you see your, I'm telling you, you see, believers have been microwaved. If they see a behavior of their husband, maybe a behavior of their boss, they're going to fasting. That's not fasting. No, that's not fasting. Fasting changes you. Fasting positions you to receive from God. I said that earlier. Without distractions, it raises your antenna. Precious Jesus. And I'll be looking forward. And I'll be looking forward to be receiving testimonies from you. Testimonies from you. After this, hallelujah, I speak tonight. Amen. I'm only laying up foundation, but I speak a special blessing over your life. That God will grant you grace and strength in the name of Jesus Christ. That you take off your year with divine spirit, <laughs> with calculated spirit. That you take off your year on fire. You start your year with calculated spirit of the Spirit, and you allow the Holy Ghost to take over you in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak a special grace to rest upon you. A special grace to rest upon you throughout the year. You are blessed. You are distinguished. For success, you are distinguished. You are separated to break limits in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not only <laughs> acquire success, but you acquire extraordinary success. You not only acquire victories, but you acquire extraordinary victories. Brother, the kingdom of God is supernaturally controlled. So fasting activates the supernatural in your walk with him. The kingdom of God is supernaturally controlled. So I speak supernatural favor in your path. Supernatural victory in your path, in your walk with Christ. Supernatural influence, supernatural assistance, supernatural supply, supernatural healing, supernatural favor. Brethren, you are made for signs and wonders this year. The prophet said, me and my children are made for signs and wonders. So you and your family and your siblings are made for signs and wonders. So this prayer and fasting is setting you into that trail, into that trek, into that walk, into that realm, into that sphere of signs 
and wonders. He is a miracle God, brethren. He is a miracle God. He is a miracle God. He, he wants to perform a special assignment in your life through you. But you have to cooperate. So prayer, this five days of prayer and fasting is a cooperation <laughs> with God. It's a cooperation. You are cooperating with God. You are one with the Spirit. God bless you. God bless you. May God increase you. May God increase your influence. May God increase your influence. I pray for you that you be established on a higher plateau. You be established on a higher dimension of faith because you be studying and feeding on scriptures. You see, because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Remember, if you don't deserve it, you can grace it. If you don't afford it, you can faith it. I'm going to repeat. If you don't deserve it, you can grace it. If you don't qualify for it, you can grace it. If you don't afford it, you can faith it. This year you walk. <laughs> In your faith account, not in your in your bank account. There's what is called the faith account. The account of faith is limitless, hence unlimited grace to accomplish things. Hallelujah. There will be supernatural provision. Supernatural provision of resources, supernatural provision of money, supernatural provision of opportunities, supernatural provision of assistance, of a network of assistance. In the name of Jesus, this is the time that you need to go big in your dream. Supernatural has got nothing to do with ordinary. So when the supernatural is at work in your life, brethren, we speak of extraordinary things, extraordinary accomplishments, extraordinary results, extraordinary harvests. That is your portion this year. That is your portion this year. Brethren, let us come boldly. We are coming boldly to the throne of grace yeah. and obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your connection tonight. I'll be looking forward to be with you tomorrow morning. As I start the day, so I'll be appearing three times a day. I'll be appearing in the morning, I'll be appearing also, but physically in the afternoon, in the ministry auditorium, and then I'll be also appearing in the breaking of bread. I'll be breaking bread with you for the next five days. Breaking bread on your breaking of your fasting. And also, I'll also be appearing a midnight encounter with me, like what I'm doing now, this is our midnight encounter. Amen. God bless you. You are set for greater heights. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let this be a different fasting. Don't fast. Don't do things out of tradition, but do things out of revelation. If you do things out of revelation, <laughs> that's when some of us who have missed supernatural results, 
Brethren, every prayer that I do, I have supernatural results. And I was telling them in the afternoon that God spoke. When God spoke, and I'm going to prepare a seed on Sunday, I'm going to break it. We're going to break our fast five days on Sunday. And I'm going to prepare a special seed concerning God spoke. When God speaks, right? A special, I prepare a special seed at the end of my fasting. Don't just end your fasting and you and you put your hands in your pocket and you start walking. Hallelujah. No, we walk by revelation. Every at the end of every prayer and fasting, I prepare a special sacrificial seed unto the Lord of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. I pray for you. Let's speak a special blessing wherever you're connecting me from. Wherever you're connecting me from. I'm seeing India. I'm seeing states. I'm seeing uh, those who are connecting from Africa. And I'm seeing all over. Hallelujah. Wherever the time of your time zone, wherever in your time zone, wherever you're connecting me from. But where I'm connecting you now is it's, it's 20 minutes to one. Just passed over midnight. Hallelujah. Amen. I bless you with his presence. I, I bless you with his word. I bless you with favor. I bless you with his presence. I bless you with his grace. With his glory. I bless you with supernatural strength during your five days of prayer and fasting. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Looking forward to be with you tomorrow. You are set for signs and wonders. If you have got anyone who is not feeling well right now, healing is taking place. Healing is taking place. Healing is taking place. That devil is living, has left you. During these sessions, brethren, it will be sessions of miracles. It will be these evening sessions. These midnight encounters will be midnight encounters of miracles. Get ready for anything. Anything is possible. These are sessions of all possibilities. Some of you will receive, listen to me, some of you will receive supernatural call. Some of you will receive supernatural money, miracle money in your bank accounts. There will be some supernatural deposits. Some of you will receive supernatural <laughs> contracts. Miracle contracts, miracle tenders that you didn't even apply for. Some of you supernatural doors will open for you. <laughs> this grace, brethren, grace, 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 brethren. <laughs> no more struggling. Struggling is over. No more struggling. You are coming to a realm of super abundance realm of overflow of his love his glory and his mercies love you looking forward to be with you tomorrow god bless you